for partnering me and came through this all the time. I was Atlanta, New York, Jersey, several times in Baltimore. Um, I called Mark about probably like five months ago. Um, he's from Baltimore, I'm from Baltimore. I mean, y'all guys are actually born and raised in Baltimore, but I've been here my entire life. 49 years old, I've been 50 years old, February. And most of my life, I made some, I call it qualified decisions. Decisions based on the need for a, a particular motivation. Most of it came from finances. Um, in 1980, I was 10 years old, my father, for some apparent reason, out of my life. I don't know where he came from. I would see him every six months, every six years. He just popped up. And he said, I haven't seen him from the steps. I said that I would be being respectful because I was happy to see him because I mean, um, I don't know if it was certain holidays that we celebrated, but I always had this, this idea of this, this super guy who would come up and make my life better. So whenever I saw him, I was optimistic about that opportunity, but he never came. So on this particular day, he said, have a seat on the step. There was an arcade game, a store, and they sold uh, chicken wings, penny candy, and things that they So I was so happy because I knew for a fact that something was going to come of this, of this relationship this particular day. So he gave me a brown paper bag. I'm like so excited and all his friends they came up and they shook his hand and he said one. I said, okay, he said two. I had to go in the bag and get the people that he told me to get them one or two. So after about an hour went by, he had about forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. And I didn't know how much money it was, I know now that I can count, I can count back then. But I know that a hundred or two people come and you give them they give you $50, that adds up to about $10,000, $20,000. So, make a long story short, he was selling drugs. And he had me sit down and serve the people drugs. But when he left, it was remarkable because I was so excited to have my own money. He gave me, and anybody just guess, he made, I, I, I promise you, he probably had 500 envelopes of her on. And I think back then they were going for $55 to $60. Can anybody guess how much money he gave me? How much all that money he made? Twenty. How much? Twenty. Zero. He gave me twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I laugh. I can laugh now too. <laughs> he gave me twenty dollars, and I took that twenty dollars. I took my friend with to the game for chicken wings. The game for like three hours. You know, and I went home. I told my mama, I said, "Your father." She said, "Where?" I said, "On the corner." And I probably haven't seen him again for probably another five years. But from that situation or that experience, I think I created um, an addictive behavior. Fast forward 12 years, my mom, who used drugs, got high pretty much my, my entire life. She gave me a letter in 1996. She was, my mother was, had a shape. I don't know me as Serena Williams, but not as stout, but she was nice, nice breasts, nice blood, nice chocolate skin, a pure black woman. And I was so proud of her because whenever she was kissing me, I would taste either Coca-Cola or a cool cigarette. But it was, it was such a, a <coughs> welcoming feeling because I know there was love coming to my body. And one day she gave me a letter, I read the letter, and in this letter, they had three alphabets that I would never, I would never forget. And it was written in print, but it was so big, I got dizzy because it, it looked like it was in cursive. So she wrote me another time how proud she was. At the time, I was 22 years old in the streets. I was, I was alive, I was healthy, I was taking care of my children by legal means, but I was a provider. And that letter, she said, baby, I love you, I'm proud of you, thank you for doing the things you're doing, being this young man, blah, blah, blah. But I gotta tell you, I might not be around to see your kids grow up because I got AIDS. So in the letter, I'm like, wow. Now, I hurry up, put the letter away, put it in my pocket, look around, make sure everybody see what I was reading, because I'm mean, embarrassed, because you know, I have a reputation. I'm this guy that everybody looked up to, and I'm like, there's no way I can tell nobody that. So I hid that for probably three years until I got incarcerated. So for three years, she started declining. Now, I'm incarcerated in 1999, so remind you, 1992, 1997, she walked around and declined, but the medication she held on. So in 1999, or 98, I got indicted on that same corner for selling drugs. So my father gave me drugs in that corner. My mother told me she was down on that corner. And I went to jail for that corner. So when I came home, I said, man, at this point, it ain't for me. 
I got to do something different. I got to find a way to be a better father, a better person, and not only get back to my community, but seek atonement, forgiveness for the lives I destroyed, and can be a person that's about change. And I know for a fact, in order for me to walk the walk, I have to talk to talk, but something had to come through. I changed my thing. Before I left, though, I had bought a house on that same block, five thousand dollars. I'm out there with husbands and my friends, all these white people come up there, black people come up there, two Chinese people. I'm like, must be a raid. But then they had police attire, so I didn't know what was going on. So I watched him. A guy bought a bullhorn and he started promoting the advertising to sell the house. And that was my neighborhood, so I had a few aisle, I got mine. I didn't know nothing about real estate, nothing about property. And the guy said, two thousand. Somebody raised their hand, three thousand. I raised my hand. Somebody said, four thousand. Anybody raised their hand? God said, for, for the children, God raised his hand, so I raised my hand. Next thing you know, the house over $5,000. And I bought the house, so the guy said, you got to have a certain amount of money now, and the rest of the I said, cool, no problem. Bought the house for $5,000. Didn't make nothing up. Didn't fix it up. Didn't meet the tenants, none of that. I just thought I owned the property. I go away two years later to prison. That house sold for $125,000 because it was a historical neighborhood. Now I'm like, wow. I got two, 10 years later, I was, I bought it in 96, 97, went to jail in 98, sold the house 2007 for 100 and something thousand dollars. And I still didn't think about investing in real estate because I, I knew when I came home I had some catching up to me. But first I wanted to move on myself. And one thing I know about change, you can say all you want to say, you can talk about this, you can talk about that, but most importantly, if you don't pay yourself, if you don't live in the world, that reflection that you see, if you're not willing to honestly um, talk to that person on a daily basis about the things you can do and shouldn't do, then you tell them a lie. Because like, I don't know how many people they got best friends with them. The person you spend the most time with. So um, again, I want to thank y'all for coming out. If I don't get a chance to thank y'all individually, you know, my individual capacity for coming out on behalf of all, for me, I thank you. I appreciate you. Um, you guys want to follow me on social network. Um, you don't got to go down, but I'm on my, my personal page is the Stoby Project. So, um, campaign page is still for Baltimore. We have a website with the same name, still for Baltimore. Um, now, I hope and pray that, you know, in days to come, some of the stuff I say, you know, the marinade, you will understand that, you know, if you can tell a kid or someone that's going through a problematic situation that's troubled about something, then they can overcome it. You know, I'm not trying to study talking about theology, but that's a different thing. I know they Sunday, but that's something totally different. But having faith in yourself and having faith in somebody that's powerful, that anybody that's willing to change your life. So, I want to thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all have a good time. I uh, know Mark will give y'all some information y'all can use. And I look forward to talking to y'all before y'all leave. Thank you. I travel around, right, and do classes and stuff like that online, but I always ask myself or tell myself, like, I don't really, like, do enough for the city. Like, I feel like I don't do enough free classes. And it ain't because I don't want to, because I really do want to, regardless of my heart. I just don't be really having the time. So I want to thank everybody for coming out today because, um, you know, I really appreciate it because it helps me um, serve my purpose, you know what I mean? Um, so what I want to start by saying is this. Um, I got two, 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 two agendas for the day, right? I have two very specific agendas, right? Uh, my first agenda is to give everybody, um, well, not, it's not in order, I'm just saying first or whatever, but like, uh, my one agenda is to um, pretty much give everybody in here an exact step-by-step -step action plan uh, or blueprint where you can start making money uh, right here in Baltimore. Um, it's how I started uh, in real estate. I started about 10 years ago, and uh, thankfully through a lot of prayer, a lot of hard work, um, and a lot of just sticking to it and not giving up a lot of ups and downs, real estate made me a millionaire, and it can make you a millionaire as so, well. It's basically three components, right? When you talk about investing in what I'm, all right, let me say this. What I'm gonna do is I'm trying to the way I try to teach it is I try to like talk to you like you know nothing. You know what I mean? So like if you just like you know absolutely nothing, like I wanna make it ABC fundamental because again, like I said, my goal is for everybody to leave here and be able to make some money, right? Um, yeah. So this is all I want you to keep in mind. Alright. Everybody in here today. We are real estate investors, okay? Y'all got that, right? Got you. Got you. Everybody here today is a real estate investor, got you. right? So what else? Real estate, real estate investor. investor. Everybody a real estate investor, right? Now, as a real estate investor, right, you have three options, mainly when we talk about residential real estate that we're gonna focus on, right? All right, so 
the whole point or the whole mission as a real estate investor, right, is to find a deal, right? And when I say find a deal, I mean you have to find somebody who is willing to sell their house below market value so that you can profit. Y'all understand that? Y'all understand? Yeah. In the back, y'all got it? Yeah. All right, so what up? What's our job? To do what? Find a deal. Find a deal, right? Okay. Once we find a deal, we got three options, right? Well, let me say this. There's a little bit more to it. It's like when we find a deal, we have to then make the seller an offer, which we're going to talk about how to do that in a little bit, right? But we have to make the seller an offer, and then we have to get the house under contract. Meaning, like, for example, I put in an offer, I tell you, uh, my realtor put in an offer, for Andrea, she put in an offer for me um, on a house in Northeast Baltimore by Coastal Yorkwood Elementary, right. and the offer was accepted. So I put in an offer, and now I have to go to contract, or I have to sign a contract with the seller, who just so happens to be the bank because it's a bank owned property, right? So we did that already. So basically, as a real estate investor, it was my job to find a property for a house that was low below market value. And once I did that, I had to do a contract. Everybody with me, right? Yes, sir. All right, so what up? What is the What's our name, John? Find a deal. Once we find a deal, what do we need to do? Huh? Get it under contract. Get it under contract or make an offer for you,